Robert Charles Sproul, is a Presbyterian theologian of Reformed Roman Catholicism. President of Ligonier Ministries, board member of Knox Theological Seminary, and a notable faculty of Reformed Theological Seminary. R.C. Sprout adores Thomas Aquinas of Rome as his fourth example of faith. Thomas Aquinas was a Roman theologian whose Antichrist teaching formed paragraph 460 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. As a Dominican, he was assigned the duty of carrying out inquisitions to murder Jews and biblical Christians by Pope Gregory IX. Here is an example of Thomas Aquinas' Antichrist teaching. Quote, the only begotten Son of God, wanting to make us sharers in his divinity, assumed our nature, so that he, made man, might make men gods. End quote. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 460, reveals Roman Catholics make themselves gods like Satan. Quote, the Word became flesh to make us partakers of the divine nature. For this is why the Word became man, and the Son of God became the Son of man. So that man, by entering into communion with the Word, and thus receiving divine sonship, might become a son of God. For the Son of God became man, so that we might become God. The only begotten Son of God, wanting to make us sharers in his divinity, assumed our nature, so that he, made man, might make men gods. End quote. R.C. Sproul says, Christian pastors, need to supplement, the scripture, with secular psychology. Quote, and if there is anybody, who should be supplementing, his search of sacred scripture, concerning the nature, of human souls, by studying secular psychology, it is the pastor. Because of what is at stake, the souls of your people. End quote. But the Word of God says otherwise. For the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The Word of God is not only sufficient to diagnose and heal men's heart and soul, but also the most powerful weapon to destroy the schemes of the devil and his demons. R.C. Sproul equates God's revelation with secular science. Quote, what you are hearing from me is that the Christian who cuts himself off from natural science or from secular science has cut himself off from divine revelation. End quote. R.C. Sproul leaves an unsolved mystery in his book Chosen by God, so that his son may attribute the origin of evil to God. Quote, but Adam and Eve were not created fallen. They had no sin nature. They were good creatures with a free will. Yet they chose to sin. Why? I don't know, nor have I found anyone yet who does know. End quote. Adam and Eve did not choose sin. Adam and Eve sinned because Eve, who did not have an accurate understanding of God's commandment, was deceived by Satan, the father of lies. Satan, who was made the signet of perfection, is the inventor of evil and sin. Because angels, as well as humans, were made in the image of God, and are creative like God, able to create things and evil, except life. Because God is life. R.C. Sproul J.R. blasphemes. God created sinners to satisfy his wrath. Quote. Every Bible-believing Christian must conclude, at least that, 
God in some sense, desired that man would fall into a sin. I am not accusing God of sinning. I am suggesting that he created sin. It was his desire to make his wrath known. He needed, then, something on which to be wrathful. He needed to have sinful creatures. End quote. In 2002, R.C. Sproul and Knox Theological Seminary led over 100 Presbyterians signed Satan's paper. An open letter to evangelicals and other interested parties. The people of God, the land of Israel, and the impartiality of the gospel, we hold these truths for Rome. The Israel of God are the believing Jews in the land of Israel. The church are the branches of Israel who is rooted in the promised land. Whoever hates Israel does not belong to the church of Christ. Once you are grafted in Israel, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus and you are Abraham's offspring. Sproul's Open Letter Article 7 says, Jesus taught that his resurrection was the raising of the true temple of Israel. Believers from all nations are now being built up through him into this third temple, the church that Jesus promised to build. What they say is against the scriptures. First, Sproul unbiblically equates the church with the third temple. Second, the third temple is the temple where the Antichrist will sit himself and claim to be God. Third, the return Christ shall be enthroned in the fourth temple, the Ezekiel temple, and shall rule over all the earth for one thousand years. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. Sproul's Open Letter Article 8 says, Instructively, the same Simon Peter, the apostle to the circumcision, says nothing about the restoration of the kingdom to Israel in the land of Palestine. Acts 1, verses 6 and 7, explicitly says, Jesus, will restore the kingdom to Israel in the land of Israel. And all his Jewish apostles were looking forward to that beautiful day. 
My servant David shall be king over them, and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall walk in my rules and be careful to obey my statutes. I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. First, there is no Palestine in the Bible. Jesus knew no Palestine. Second, the land of Canaan was given to Israel by God for an everlasting possession. Third, Sproul is rebelling against God, helping Islamic Arabs to steal God's holy land from Israel. Sproul's open letter, Article 10, says, A day should not be anticipated in which Christ's kingdom will manifest Jewish distinctives, whether by its location in the land, by its constituency, or by its ceremonial institutions and practices. But God's word says otherwise. The burnt offering that the prince offers to the Lord on the Sabbath day shall be six lambs without blemish and a ram without blemish. Then everyone who survives of all the nations that have come against Jerusalem shall go up year after year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Booths. You see? Christ's kingdom is typically very Jewish in Jerusalem, Israel as the Word of God prophesied. Sproul's Ligonier Ministries sued Christian Frank Vance for calling Sproul's son-in-law, Tim Dick, part of a family of nincompoops, a very corrupt man, a lying, thieving con artist. The lawsuit was dropped due to its lack of legal merit. Didn't the Apostle Paul warn us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that Christians should not sue Christians, but must settle their disputes within the church? Is Sproul a Christian at all? 
To be a reformed theologian like Sproul, you must be a hypocrite. You must proclaim the great solas of the Reformation, while keeping the Vatican non sola scriptura creeds, confessions, Christmas, Easter, infant baptism, and believing the non sola scriptura trinity, covenant theology, and secular psychology, as well as all sorts of fake science as divine revelation. You must be a blasphemer. You must make God the author of evil, in the name of the sovereignty of God. You must be an antichrist. You must hate Israel and Jews, like the Roman God. You must be a Vatican replacement theology believer. You must believe that the church replaced Israel, and you replaced Jesus' chosen Jews. You must be a Vatican amillennialist. You must believe a symbolic 1,000-year reign of Christ through his church. That is, the present period under the Roman Catholic rule is Christ's 1,000-year kingdom.